Lancaster Unboxing, welcome back to uh, the time of year when we're done with hunting season and we finally come back to talking about some archery specific stuff. And I've been super sick. I don't know if you can still hear me, so I've kind of been down and out for this past week or so. Um, but exciting day today. We have Be Real Custom Built Arrows, now live on BeRealMerch.com. We have been tirelessly fletching these. They are all hand fletched to the specs that I have been enjoying and using. It's a uh, Victory Rip TKO fletched with the X3 at a left degree helical, all hand fletched at our warehouse. Um, so tons of SKUs available, any sort of lengths. Um, the popular spines are available, 250, 300, 350, and 400 spines cut to length. We're going to cut them, install the outsert, along with a boning field tip so brealmerch.com we have a very limited amount of these we're calling them i guess the small batch we only got a certain amount and once they are gone that is the last time this exact arrow is ever going to be sold so small batch custom built b-roll arrows now on brealmerch.com get them like it back to the unboxing um this is a new uh a new thingy that PJ said I would enjoy and I should open. So we're going to do that. And uh, it's, it is a new product, I believe. Spot Hog Grinder with multi-ring technology. And look at all of the pins in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven pins sight. Holy cow. So, uh, I don't think there's anything else in here. Nope. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open this up. You know, we've done some spot hog sites in the past. Um, spot hog is actually like a like a family-owned company, been around forever. They make probably are known to make the most robust sites. Like you can drop it off a cliff and it'll probably be fine. But in return for that, maybe not the most precise sites um, but still really good product really good site and look at that bad boy we got seven pins in there um, man I don't think I've ever shot a seven pin so this is gonna be interesting for sure so we'll run through a couple of these features um, most obvious is this ring that they have out front they send an extra one there for you and this can just spin off just kind of a quick and easy design that they got a lot of threads it can just come off so take that off put this one on if I were to shoot this I honestly would probably do this one because that's quite a lot and I want it a little tighter but that still gets the job done obviously we have seven pins and I believe yeah so you have all of your pin adjustments here on the side um, which is a lot it's a lot to fit in just space wise seven pins um, but they got it done uh, all right here. So that's all the adjustability, and I'll go over that here in a second. But it looks like here we have some elevation adjustment. So if you need to do a, a big elevation change, you can loosen those two, move the housing up or down, and then lock it back in. It also looks like in this L bracket right here, we have some left and right big adjustments. So if you need to bump the whole scope to the left, you can move this bracket over on the other side. Um, or vice versa how it is there looks like you got micro click right here after you loosen this bolt you can micro adjust left and right here along with vertical adjustment right there all you got to do is loosen that bolt so you go ahead undo that and adjust that which this site is uh, like a bolt-on site um, and it's not like a quick micro adjust it's a you know, take out a pair of Allen wrenches and crack it loose and move it, which is fine. But that's why I also say it's like a very robust site. Like, you lock this down, it's not really going anywhere. I'm kind of interested on the pin system. Let's let's look at that before we, we dive in and do anything else. Make sure I got the right Allen wrench, which I do. I think this is the pivot system. I just want to double check. Yeah, okay. So, 
how you adjust these pins is it's kind of interesting, but these are two little teeter-totter screws, I like to call them, that sit on the pin. And as you bring it around this way, as you tighten one down, it pushes on one side, but if you loosen it, it to a point, it, it loosens, and then you go to your other one, and then you tighten that down. So if you loosen one, you have to tighten the other one down. But what is kind of cool about it is you can make them lock into each other. Um, but what I've found with these is sometimes it can be a little frustrating because you gotta loosen one a little bit if you just wanna move it a tiny little bit and then tighten the other one and then you go, oh, that's too far. Then you gotta go back, tighten it back down. Um, but once it is locked in, it's locked in. Um, so essentially, it's like two set screws on a on a metal frame, and if you tighten this one down, it rotates it, but then you got to loosen this one before you do that. So if you want to move your pin up, you would have to loosen this one and tighten this one, and it'll switch it over. It's on like a teeter-totter. It doesn't, the actual pin doesn't go up and down, it just pivots, which I think is how they got all of these crammed in there, the way that they are. So let me go ahead and get this bolted on a bow. We have our trusty V3X from a few years back. We'll go ahead and put it on. Okay. I'm wondering if there's um, second or third axis here. I'm really not seeing it. Sweet. Let's see if I can start loosening stuff and messing with it. Man, these are also large. Okay, so this is our left and right adjustment. So I loosen that, and now you can see. You can probably see a good right there. You can see this can adjust now, and it's not a click. I thought it was a click system. It's not. It's just friction, which is fine because you got your little hash marks. I'm going to roughly get this aligned with my center shot. It's the quick way to do it before I'm going out to the range, I guess, is just align your pins with your center shot, which is the string pretty much to the center of the grip, slightly left, and then you just get them aligned that way. So tighten that down. And I don't know if we have axis adjustments on this site. We loosen that. I'm guessing it's the same thing. Yeah, just friction. Friction, no clicks, which is fine. And then I don't know where you would do your second and stuff. I don't I don't think you have that. It's this is like a <clears throat> kind of more of a, a budget bolt on the side of the bow type site, but it's really robust and can still get you a ton of pins. Um, if you're a type of guy that just says like I want all my pins all of the time, 20, let's see, what would that be? That'd be 20 through 80, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. That's a lot, but you're that type of guy. And it's also kind of small, compact right in there. We also have uh, room for a sight light, so a sight light can get bolted on there. We have two little quiver holes, and that's about all I know. The grinder, spot hog, sight, spot hog, like I said, it's been around forever, and there's uh, no question that this site is super, super robust. So let's go ahead. Um, now what I want to do is I want to shoot in here, and get my 20 pin just kind of like good, and then we'll go outside, and then we'll see how quick it is to get this full thing sighted in 20 through 80. Also, I haven't shot this bow in forever. Tell you one thing right now is my peep sight for this giant housing is not good. It'll work, but that this housing, I don't, I don't know how big it is, but like the UV3 XL is 41. I feel like this is bigger than a 41 because my peep sight is well within this. Oh, I could take out this peep sight. Hold on, let's do that. 
So what I'll do is I'll just completely take out, take this out and then it'll be a quarter inch peep and it should be good. <clears throat> peep sight fit is super important with all this stuff. Different sights, different housings you want. You want your vision and your peep sight to be tight and not covering uh, like an outer ring or some reference point on the scope. Um, like this one's ginormous, so that's why we have to take out, take that out. Probably a quarter inch peep will be what you want for this, I guess. We'll know here in one hot second. Dang, yeah. You don't want to go any smaller than a quarter. Which, this is a straight up hunting sight. So having a lot of light in for having a big peep sight is fine. Okay. I think my 20's on too, so probably good to go outside. It's also important um, for 20, you need to prepare your pins like where they sit for the rest of the distances. So if you end up having your 20 down low in the middle of the housing, you're not going to set yourself up to shoot all the way back. So we'll see where this lands. I think it'll be fine where it's like if this ends up being about where it's at, um, it'll be fine. But you just always want your, your top pin, especially with a seven pin like this is. You got to really have like your pin gap management, I guess, uh, make sense in your scope. Or you'll just, you'll have no room. That go right in the middle? The dot, oh. yeah, on the left side of it. Okay, a little left. But we got lucky. So, move our left and rights now. this big guy and I got really I didn't move anything relating my 20 pin I just that was that was just locked so we're a little left bump that over this is the only downfall to this type of sight with like an allen wrench is you gotta unloosen it change it tighten it down every time but like I said once it's once it's tightened down it's it's tightened down but if you ever uh, change anything or check on anything in camp and it's like ah, I'm just like an inch left you gotta break out the allen wrenches which honestly once it's locked in that it my preferred thing is like once you have it set up is it is locked in okay let's go to 30 so we'll just see what the the stock I guess gap where this lands for that, I haven't changed anything, but I am gonna use my second pin now for 20 and 30. I'll do 10 yard gaps. It's probably smart to do 10 yards gap unless you have a low enough poundage to where your 10 yard gap is so big that you then can maybe do five yard gaps. So 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Um, but if you're shooting some de decent speeds, 280 or faster, you probably are always gonna wanna do 10 yard gaps. We might get lucky. That's right in the dot also. My sight picture, the pins are really, really bright, which I like. It's got super exposed fiber. The pins are really bright. Um, one thing I've, I've never really loved with Spot Hog is this vertical uh, line that they have down there. Uh, partially kind of like protect the pins, but I think also since uh, the pins are on like the teetering system, they can get out of center if you move them too far. So I think that also just makes sure that you're, uh, you're, you don't go too far out of center. So let's go back, we'll try 40. Eventually we're gonna have to move the pins. Here we got a pass through. I don't see it, let me shoot another one. Okay, right in the dot. I shot up in the, the morel. Still a little left, but I'm not gonna move it quite yet because we're just like an inch left. Let's see if we're keep favoring left. Getting really lucky with this uh, pin gap here. 
guess if you're shooting right around 295 and you buy this sight, your pins are going to be preset for you at least through 40 yards. So 50. This is this is the thing about pins. You got to make sure 20, 30, 40, 50. So the center green pin is going to be my 50. Okay, I think we finally got one a little low, but we're still now we're now we're more left. The further we're going back, we're just keep going more left. So let's do that more. Okay, I think that's good. Um, now what I'm gonna do though, so you did bump it down, but now I know I'm gonna have to bump all of mine down a little bit. So I'm gonna tighten, I guess I didn't tighten that one back up. Now I'm gonna loosen the next one. Oh, hold on. Aha, okay. I learned something now. This is, this screw is to move the pin in and out. It is not a locking screw. So I can move, let's see what I want. I'm moving the third from the bottom. I can literally move this pin in and out to align it on the line when you move it from the pivot. Ah! I did not know that. Answers a question. That does answer a big question of mine, which was, why are these pins so off cantered? I thought this was a locking screw. I'm gonna move these all now, after moving them. That helps. That makes a lot of sense, okay. Disregard what I said earlier. It's a lot of back and forth with this system, which is fine. Just a lot of trial and error, back and forth. Okay, close. I think. I think this should be good. So I kind of just <clears throat> went down the line and, and guessed now beyond 50, just based off the pin gap, what it would probably be and then adjusted my pins in and out. Now that I know that that's a feature. Um, so hopefully we can go to 60 and the rest of them and it'll be pretty close. So I gotta go pull these arrows. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Got it. Okay. On to the next. It really helps. Like I just did, you get about halfway and then you just kind of guess where all of them are because they really, they end up getting bound up together. If you, if I went one by one and had to constantly move one down, then I would have to move all the rest down and then one down and all the rest down. So it's good to do a reset, especially halfway through on a big site like this. Um, looking at the gaps, I bet we'll be pretty good the rest of the way. Yeah, that sucker went way low. I'm gonna shoot that again. <clears throat> low and then right again. That's better. 
I'm not gonna leave a lot of room for my 80 down there. I'm gonna adjust that now because chances are it's gonna be lower. I'm gonna be pretty much in with my bubble. Dang. Well, we'll see if this is good. Hi. <clears throat> this is the back and forth of the pins, especially huge multi pins like this, which can get frustrating. <clears throat> I'm gonna say that's good so you can see down at the bottom we ended up getting really tight so our, our 50 is good and then it's like 60 and then 70 took a big jump and 80 took a big jump it's just because the further you go it's all exponential if you know you could just look at a normal sight tape and see that they just get bigger and bigger and bigger so that's what I was talking about when you're at your 20 you really want to prepare for there to be room for your 80 because if we're in a situation right now where it's like my 80 is like I can't get 80 it's like if my max distance right now is 75 and I was trying to do this bottom one I would literally have to bump my whole housing down a little bit and then move all of my pins back up which would just be a pain I mean you would ha essentially have to redo the whole thing um, so it's very 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 important when you're getting your 20 and your really all of your top pins you know your top half of your pins Make sure you can get those as high, not as high into the site housing because then that creates a weird sight picture. But, you know, maybe you're about 20%. If you were 20% at the top of this housing for your 20 pin, that probably would be pretty solid. It's just part of cramming seven pins into a housing, but we got it and it worked. Let's go inside because I'm freezing. The Spot Hog Grinder Sight. I actually believe it's a whole series and this is just the seven pin option. Uh, PJ just wanted my mind to have a workout and uh, set up these seven pins. So definitely doable, definitely a great sight. It is all micro adjustable to some degree uh, that it needs to be to get set. And once it's set, it is set. I'm very confident in this. I mean, the pins are super robust. The whole system is super simple and robust. Um, so once you get this thing set up, it's, it's going to be a workhorse. And if seven pins is your style, definitely don't look past this site. Um, why you want seven pins, you know, that's probably going to be a question, especially if you're, um, you know, a little newer getting into bow hunting or whatever, seven pins, it gives you all of your yardages right there, 20 through 80. So if you're ever in a situation, you know, especially out West, um, if, you know, a deer or an elk or whatever is constantly, let's say, Perfect example is a bull is pushing cows around and it goes from 20 to 70 yards like this. And all you have to do is range, draw back, find your pin and shoot. Um, that's really what this does is gives you that option right there. Um, so I definitely know a lot of guys that run it. The only downfalls I would say is we have no second or third axis adjustment, um, which Considering machining is proper and everything is proper, it will be fine. It will be in line. And especially since the connection points are very, very slim, and there's not a lot of them, and it's a, it's a very simple sight, good chance that it is going to be correct. Um, but it is always good to have peace of mind and have that adjustability there. Um, the only other con I would say is just the overall pin setting up system. I know some guys that like it, some guys don't like it. It's just a little tedious for me going back and forth. But like I said, once it's locked, it's locked. Other, you know, pin adjustments is like a little set screw or something. And honestly, this is probably better than a tiny little set screw holding in a pin in place. Um, as far as like rigidity and if you flopped it down a mountain, it would last. Um, so there we go. Spot hog grinder on LancasterArcherySupply.com. Make sure to check it out check out all their awesome other needs for your archery needs. All, wow. All of their other items. 
and archery supplies for your needs, not their needs. They have needs too. PJ's needy sometimes. Okay, we'll see you guys on the next one.